Hello and welcome to the Narrow Gate. My name is Gary Pfeffer. It's good to be here. And uh, I'm glad to be speaking with you once again. I do want to give a quick update once again. When it gets close to the final episode of this season, I will give an indication on the last episode stating that that will be the last one. That way that you'll have an update. The title of this episode is God is doing a new thing. And I want to start off with prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for what you are doing. I thank you that you are a good God. I thank you that this is a new season, not only in my family's life, but also a new season for many in the body of Christ. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are going to move and you're going to move mightily. And I thank you, Lord, for new doors that are going to be opening. Lord, I thank you that you are doing a new thing. And regardless of the things that are going on at this moment, in this time, you are still moving. And Lord, I just thank you in Jesus' name. So I am reading from Isaiah 43, 14 through 21. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I will send to Babylon and bring them all down as fugitives, the Chaldeans who rejoice in their ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariots and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinguished. They are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. This people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. This is an amazing scripture. The important things to gather from this particular scripture is that God is making a way where it was impossible for many, many people to go through. And I know for a fact it's been kind of rocky, right? But here's the thing. The fugitives are being taken down. The walls, the hindrances, the blocks are being taken down in this season. And this is really important to consider. Because if we look at the other scriptures, it says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. So the things of the past are now the past. So we must look forward. We must look on for what's ahead. The fugitives are being pulled away. And I, I feel like for many people in the body of Christ, there has been wrong types of people that have been set in your lives. And I feel like God is about ready to remove those people from your life. And I wouldn't look at it as a bad thing. I would look at it as an opportunity. Because if God is bringing new people in your life, they are going to be the people 
that are fitting for you because this is a time and a season where things are coming to a close and I've said before I don't know the day or the hour but I, we can tell by the seasons and I can say this it is definitely to a point things are definitely culminating but I, I do believe that God is pouring out huge huge blessings on the body of Christ for the reason of spreading the kingdom and furthering the kingdom and I know I've mentioned this kind of stuff in the past but I feel like the breakthroughs that are going to be occurring are going to be happening very 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 shortly and I also wanted to mention I feel like there is going to be a time and a season where you know the, the corruption there's going to be an exposure of corruption in many ways and I don't want to get too much emphasis on things or go into too much detail on where these things are but I mean these things could be corruption in the environment around us or it could just be corruption within our lives or in other people's lives that are around us I believe that corruption is going to be exposed but it can also be corruption in our hearts I think God is also going to reveal to us the things in our own hearts and when they're revealed to us we can't it'll be a, a repulsive feeling where we just really want to let go of those things and we we the only thing that we would be able to do is cry out to God to give God those particular things and God will bless us and God will set us free from those things so when you're feeling those particular things don't hesitate to give it to him because that's where the freedom lies and I want you all to remember that and so corruption the exposure of corruption not only changes our lives but it changes the environment around us so if there is environmental changes of corruption being exposed then obviously the very foundations in which we all stand in is going to be affected in some way shape or form but I also I know personally in my and in, in our home church there's been a couple words that have been given where there is going to be a spreading of the wealth and those that have been operating in corruption are going to be exposed and that wealth is going to be moved and pushed into those uh, pushed around and moved towards those that really can do make a difference and have a heart to make an impact on society and I, I really think that this is the time and the season for that and I've seen I was listening to a word yesterday that pertained to something that our home church was talking about um, as we feel like the Lord has led us in and it, it, it coincides with those things. Now, I don't, like I said, I don't really like to mention, you know, names all the time, whether they're good for good things or for bad things. I just don't like doing it. But I, I just the same, I just wanted to mention that this is coming down the pike. And in order to get to that point, we need a heart change. Because... If God's going to pour out his blessing upon us to give us the means to do these things, then obviously there has to be something within us that has to die. Because we can't have self-righteousness, we can't have pride, we can't have those things in which would control us or manipulate us into wanting to go a direction with those blessings that would be completely what God originally designed for these blessings in the per in the first place because like I mentioned before these these blessings that are going to pour out could very well be used for own personal gain but ultimately that would not be a very good decision 
because this is a point and this is a time and this is a season where corruption is being exposed. And I think as bodies of believers, we have to realize that when we're going into this new season, that our heart needs to be for the kingdom and our heart needs to be for families, for our friends, for for those that are struggling, for those that need help, for those that need guidance. The whole purpose of Christianity, or the faith thereof, is to become more like Him. I mean, we're even supposed to become more in the image of like Christ. So, if that's the case, then obviously we need to change our hearts and our minds in the process and the beasts of the field will honor me the jackals and the ostriches because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people my chosen the people I have formed for myself they shall declare my praise and that's the important thing. It is for the glory of God. Everything that is done is for the glory of God. And if God's word isn't being fulfilled, there's no glory in it. And that's the whole purpose of what is coming forward. Is to bring glory where there is darkness because yes the darkness is increasing and I know for a majority of us we can see that that the darkness is increasing and for some it can be overwhelming for others you know they probably have a strong strong faith I know for me my faith is getting better my doubt is getting better I'm blessed. Thank you for listening to The Narrow Gate. We are glad that you've joined us, and we invite you to like this podcast and follow us at Power in Perryville on Facebook and MeWe. Subscribe and press the bell on YouTube. The Narrow Gate's new podcasts, videos, and updates will be on these platforms, as well as Buzzsprout and Apple Podcasts. To contact us directly, please email us at powerinpville at gmail.com we are grateful for you our viewers and would love to hear from you and remember for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction and there are many who enter through it for the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life and there are few who find it because I now have this perspective where I can see that and I pray that all of you will even see that perspective yourselves. So, besides all that, what I also feel like God is about to do is God is about to help the body of Christ in areas that would be impossible for the individuals to even think, fathom, or even be able to do the things that God wants to do. You know, I was thinking to myself, this is hypothetically speaking, there's been a lot of censorship in the media and things like that. I'm po I, I was pondering today as I was watching something and I was like, I was thinking to myself, when it comes time for Jesus Christ to come back and the Mount of Olives is split in two, the whole world is going to see that. The whole world is going to see the one that has been pierced. The whole world, all at the exact same time. And never before, in any time, has it ever been a point where the whole world could see Jesus Christ come back. 
at the exact same time. All they have to do is look at their phones, their computers, their tablets, their glasses, and whatever devices there might be in the future. And that's an amazing concept. So I think to myself, there has to be some sort of breakthrough in social media where there wouldn't be a hindrance to the message being brought out. And I truly believe that the message still needs to be brought out all into the four corners of the earth. And believe it or not, the internet has been pretty prominent is in bringing the gospel message out and especially for the past two years it's shot through the roof as far as the message of the word of god being sent out and that's pretty cool and i ultimately think that there's more that needs to come in that area and i think it will continue to grow so I, I ultimately think that there has to be some sort of hindrance that blocks the censorship, not only in this nation, but also other nations as well. Something's got to give, and I think it will. Because there are points and times in Scripture, especially in Revelation, uh, which... You know, as far as the 144,000 of the 12 tribes of Israel, the two witnesses coming forward uh, with their message, all these things play a point. And the, these particular groups have seals upon their, upon their foreheads and upon their hands. And the two witnesses, which I believe are uh, not necessarily people, but the body of Christ, these people will be given authority to preach the gospel and to move in signs and wonders. Which means the gospel can't be hindered even all the way to the end of tribulation. The gospel can't be hindered. Glory to God. So I want to say to you all that there are new things coming and I don't entirely know every single thing that's coming forward but I do know that God is going to do some things in your lives and it's going to be to glorify him so when you see those things and you see those things coming pray ask him because that's going to be a perfect opportunity for you to find out so with all that being said, I think it's now time to pray. And I know we didn't talk about too much or touch bases with too much, but I do want to say that step back, wait, watch, and see. The glory of the Lord is upon us. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for all your glory and everything that you're doing. I thank you that you're taking away the sin. You're taking away that which has been a hindrance to us. You're taking away that which has held on to us whether it's our past, whether it's circumstances, whether it's things that we did personally or others did to us. Father, I thank you that you're writing those things and changing those things so that you can move us forward to the purpose and the plan that you have for us. And Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you would write, even right now, pour out your spirit on each and every individual that is listening and that you would deposit a seed in them, that you would deposit your peace in them, 
that you would deposit your joy in them. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would give them some sort of discernment or glimpse of what is coming forward. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus if there are people that are struggling in health, Lord, I pray that you would touch them and change them and transform them and restore them. And Father, I, I'm getting the heart, um, which is real strong. Father, I pray for each individual who's having any kind of heart condition or any kind of spiritual condition that's connected or related to the heart. And Father, in the name of Jesus, I just declare over those things healing, whether it's abnormalities, whether it's scar tissue, whether it's deformities, In the name of Jesus, I just declare restoration might. And Father, if there are soul wounds that pertain to the heart, Lord, I pray that you will pull those things out in the name of Jesus. And Father, even right now, I pray that you would bring to the mind of each individual that may have any kind of heart wounds, that you will bring those things to the surface so that they would see them and that they would be able to give them to you. And if you have any of those things, I just say to you all, give those wounds to God. Give those oh, whatever kinds of things, betrayal, hate, um, anything that pertains to those type of things. I just say, give those things to God. And Father, I also pray for affirming of the foundation in the body of Christ. I pray that everybody that's listening, in the name of Jesus, if they've been having a rocky point or a rocky walk, I pray in the name of Jesus that roots would come out of their feet and into the ground. Father, I pray and give thanks to you because you are moving. And I also want to mention something else that I've been feeling um, that needs to be brought forth. And that is that there is land, homes, and other things that are about to be given to the body of Christ. It's almost like an increase in territory. And God's going to pour out His Spirit and remove some blocks in people's lives that are associated with that. And it is for God's glory. Remember that. And ask yourself, what can you do with these things that could glorify God and that would glorify Him? But anyway, God's going to move in that way. So, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for every person or every family that has been trying to pursue real estate in some kind of home, in some kind of land, in the name of Jesus, right now. I just pray that you will pour out, that you will remove those blocks, and that you will remove those hindrances, and that you will bring forth exactly what is needed to walk from this new season this the old season into the new season and uh father i also pray like i said for anybody that has been having any kind of um, emotional struggles i pray in the name of jesus that you would begin to change and transform those particular conditions that you would bring the body of christ out of the emotional turmoil that they've been struggling with for a long time and in the name of Jesus Lord I glorify your name and I thank you 
because it is you that is the healer. It is you that is the deliverer. It's you that is the giver. And Father, I thank you for touching them and bringing breakthrough and relieving them from their emotional turmoil. Lord, I pray if anybody has been having nightmares, Father, I just decree and declare a release from those that have been in the bondage of intense nightmares. And Father, I thank you for that. And Father, I pray that you will pour out on their hearts and that you would just deposit your peace in them. My peace I leave you, my peace I give you, but not as the world can give. Lord, I pray that they may be able to rejoice and be glad in it. And I pray that even right now that they would be able to feel that peace. Lord, I pray that they would be able to feel that goodness because you are so good and you're so merciful. And Father, I just pray and give thanks to you in the name of Jesus. Amen.